Hey everybody, Rose Matter here, and welcome back to Umineko, where we are getting into episode 6, Dawn of the Golden Witch. So this one, Badler, is going to be the Game Master, which should be interesting, especially because apparently he knows the truth about everything. So I don't know what to expect from this game board. But uh, it has been a while since kind of my regularly scheduled Umineko playthrough, so I know you guys are like chomping at the bit for me to get back into this, and I'm excited to see what Chapter 6 has in store for us, so let's get into it. A beautiful glow showed in from the skylight over at the Grand Cathedral. The place was somehow different from the way it had been during the witch's trial. Is this like the inauguration of Badler? The decorations had changed. It almost looks like a wedding's taking place. The several pleasantly sparkling red ribbons were paper thin, but they hung beautifully in the air. Flowers were arranged all over in a way that would make any place look cheerful. It was like how a single drop of impure water could spoil an entire cask of wine. Just the presence of the flowers, the ribbons, and the red carpet that read down the center of the room made it hard to believe that this was the same place Ushirami and Natsui had been falsely accused of a crime. Oh my gosh, it had truly become a wedding chapel. What? What? What the hell? We are two minutes in and a new character is introduced. <laughs> okay. Two new characters. Two. Okay. <laughs> These words, spoken by two demons who seem to be in charge of this gathering, were part of a ceremony for making an oath of love before the eyes of God. Of course, in this wedding celebrated by demons, there was no priest in sight. Instead, there stood the witch who controls miracles. Well, uh, what, 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 what? <laughs> Conquered the bridegroom? <laughs> what? Well, I'm already confused as hell. <laughs> the bride standing on the carpeted path was Furuto Erika. The groom's face couldn't be seen. The bride's outfit was, without a doubt, a pure white wedding dress. The bride's veil represented both the white of God's blessing and the white of the demon's cruelty. A great many goat nobles, witches, and demons were gathered for this wedding. If only their heads hadn't been those of goats, it would probably have seemed to be a very refined crowd worthy of this great cathedral. <laughs> At that point, Birdcastle stared straight into the groom's eyes. The groom didn't answer. His eyes were grey. His lips would mutter something from time to time, but no one could tell if the words meant anything. She spoke to the groom in the plural. Of course, there was only one groom, and of course the grey-eyed groom didn't answer. <laughs> What in the world? What? 
Battler, Battler's supposed to be the game master. Why is he... Okay, what? I was afraid it was Battler, but I'm like... <laughs> no, he's supposed to be the big boss of this one. <laughs> the Witch of Miracles sneered with an evil smile that would make even demons want to avert their gaze. Even that sneer provoked no response from Badler's dim eyes.人は愛のために生きるのです。すなわち今日はあなた方は生まれてきた意味を目的を成し遂げた。生きる力愛の力のなんと偉大なことか。今日という日の輝きがどうかお二人を永遠に祝福しますように。うるさいわ、悪魔
I finally regained consciousness on top of a bed with a firm mattress. Where was this again? I couldn't remember where this was, but I could vaguely recall that it was very bad for me to be here. The room was dimly lit. There was a light on, but that just made the darkness and eeriness of the room more apparent. There were no curtains over the window, but it was too dark outside to see anything beyond it. Is this the locked room that he's stuck in? If I squinted into that pitch, black, uh, pitch blackness, it felt as though I would see the Witch of the Forest peeking back at me through the darkness, and I averted my gaze from the window in fear. I couldn't see or hear it, but I got the feeling that if I left this room, it would be bright and warm, and somebody would be there for me. I have to get to where everyone else is right now. A bad memory from when I was very young began to well up. I was having trouble staying awake during a family gathering, and the next thing I knew, I was lying on a bed in a room I'd never seen before. I have the horrible, painful memory of waking up there feeling very uh, incredibly lonely and crying my eyes out. This room, I'm not supposed to be here. I just want out. Once I started to think that way, I didn't want to stay in this room a second longer than I had to. This room scares me. It's creepy. Where is everyone? I want to get out of here right now. This music is creepy, damn. I open the door trying to leave the room. A pleasant glow snuck in through the crack of the door. As I thought, the corridor was filled with a comforting light. I couldn't actually hear them, but I could sense that far away, people were enjoying themselves. Everyone else must be gathered in the room across from this one. I've been shut up in this lonely, creepy room, all alone. I should go quickly. As soon as I thought this, a merciless metallic sound rang out, and the door refused to open any further. The chain had been set. I'd always hated chain locks. You can open a normal lock just by twisting, but chain locks are built in a kind of annoying way where it's difficult to undo them easily so I've hated them since I was very young. See? Even this chain is causing me trouble, and I just can't get it undone. Remake- <laughs> This is a sequel or remake of Silent Hill, The Room. That- That game creeped me the F out, so like, the idea of being chained in a room and you can't get out is horrifying. Why is this happening? I just want to leave this creepy room right away. Just on the other side of this thin door, everything is bathed in a warm light. I can't undo it. I just can't undo this chain. The more desperate I grew, the more the unsettling darkness of this room seemed to close in on me from behind, and the more frightened I became. Then I finally noticed there was something wrong with this chain. Yes, there is a chain, but this isn't a chain lock. This is just a chain staked into the door so that it can't open any further. In other words, it isn't made to be opened. What, what the hell's going on? Who would do something like this? No matter what I did, no matter how much I struggled, I couldn't pull out the stake, or undo the chain, or break the mechanism. This door was just a demon's mouth, made to trick me into thinking it would open, before crushing my hopes a moment later. Even so, if only I could just open this door somehow, I could get out into that pleasant corridor. This desire forced me to keep my hand glued to the doorknob. But it was useless. Both the chain and stake were firm, and though they had clattered about, there was no chance of them letting the door open any further. Even though I could see the pleasant hallway through the crack, I had no chance of opening the door any further. Maybe someone will come if I yell. Maybe the door can be opened easily from the outside. When I thought this, I tried to call out to someone, but it was as though the wind had been knocked out of me. I could mouth the words, someone, come here but no voice left my lips. What's going on? Someone, come. Why can't I cry out? Help me, help me, help me. Not even being able to say help me out loud scared me more than anything. And if I turned around, the witch gazing into the room from the darkness outside might now be inside the room, standing right behind me. I'm frightened, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. Someone help me. Someone help me. 
I can't get out. I can't get out. Let me out of this room. Help me. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. Let me out. Let me out. Help me. Help me. Help me. Well, that sounds much more pleasant, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. Wait, is that Angie? Is that Angie and, uh... What's his name? Uh, ak Akasama or Akumas? That Oh my god, it is! We're back to Angie again! Oh my god, what? This is going all over the place. <laughs> I didn't know if I'd ever see her again. Amakusa ran his finger down my cheek. Oh, that's creepy. I awoke in an instant from the doze I had just been in. I glared at Amakusa for waking me up in such a creepy way, but he just played dumb. What in the world? Where is this? It feels like a parlor in the house of some well-off person, but I have no memory of this place at all. I guess if Badler was the, uh, you know, the game board master, of course he would bring Angie back if he was able to, so maybe he could see her again. Where is this? And why am I- except this is present day. So are we jumping- is this like chapter 3 where we're jumping between the different, like, timelines and stuff? I'm so confused. <laughs> Apparently, he hadn't expected me to forget something like that just because I wasn't fully awake yet. Oddly enough, I agreed. Why am I in this parlor I don't recognize? It looks very nice. The sound of the footsteps of the person, or people, that Amakusa had mentioned had come right up to the opposite side of the door. I could hear the sound of a conversation. They were probably women. Judging by the coffee and snacks laid out in front of me, I was the guest here. In that case, I better remember why I came. Or at least, who it was I came to visit. Who am I? Ushuramiya Angie. Who is this man standing behind me? Amakusa Juza. Oh, I mean, we already know him, but let's... We'll go back into this again, I guess. Uh, I, I guess we'll read it. Might as well. Uh, a former guard of Ava's, an extreme thrill-seeker who accepts dangerous jobs for little pay. He had served as Angie's bodyguard before, but after he broke Ava's strict order not to talk to Angie countless times, Ava ultimately took a dislike to him and let him go. Angie herself didn't find him all that bad because he was someone she could talk to. JSDF Foreign Legion Private Military Companies. This man has traveled them all and has skill in counter-sniping and escorting VIPs. And then Angie, the final descendant of the Ushuramiya family 12 years in the future. In the middle of her journey to reach Rokunjima while evading pursuers from the Sumadera family, she is sucked into the world of an impossible memory. Okay. She reached several truths in the past games and possesses enough power to represent observers. It is said many uh, witches are fond of her bad attitude, and many of them even have an eye on becoming her master. The man who used to be my guard long ago. He's now the bodyguard Okanagi assigned to me. In that case, after Aunt Ava died, I must have thrown off my pursuers and gone on a journey to find out what happened on that day 12 years ago. Is that what happened? Did I have a memory of this? After a knock, the door opened, and the person I must have come here to meet entered along with a maid. Oh, wonderful. Even after seeing her face, I can't remember who she is. That's a relief. The maid introduced her to me first. And I finally remembered who she was. She? I was sure it was a he. Alright, new character introduced. Let's check it out. 
All right, Hachijo Toya, a message bottle forger. Oh, she's the mysterious novelist, and the mysteries surrounding her outnumber even those found in her novels. Claiming to have found the truth of Rokunjima, she writes new tales and publishes them on the web as though giving out extra hints. However, I have no memory of meeting her before my trip to Nijima. あれは編集部の方に手配していた改造絵が私でした。こりゃ驚いた。先生の作品は読んだことないが。多分あんた本人の方がよっぽどミステリーですぜ。読者など本を読んでいるふりをしているだけ。作者名とブランドだけで本を読み、読んだつもりでいる。彼らには私の本に何が書いてあっても何も読んでなんかいない。She's a little full of herself, isn't she? It's like my readers are idiots. They don't understand. They they read it, but they don't understand. ただいま。流行りの作品は欠かさず読んでいると言ってるぶるためにああ、なるほど。確かにあなたが八条先生のようですね。This person really is eccentric. There's no doubt about it. This is Hachijo Toya herself. Wait, she, I, it, okay, it was bothering me. She looks familiar. That's, she's the witch from, she looks like the witch from uh, the Higurashi, uh, Sotsu, or Go, whichever one you want. I think it was Sotsu. And people are saying that she was a character from Umineko. What was her name? She was the one that was like manipulating Sadako. Oh my God, I'm blanking. I bet that's her, isn't it? Um, anyway, sorry. Um, Hajijo Toya is a mystery novelist who's become the center of discussion lately, although her actual books are also apparently highly praised. It's her mysterious de uh, debut that's attracted so much attention towards her lately. Last year, she somehow managed to win several different awards for exceptional mystery novels offered by multiple large publishing companies, submitting each of her works under a different pen name. And after that, several highly regarded anonymous works were discovered, one after another, to have been stories she had written in the past under false names. And her popularity soared as she herself became more mysterious than her books. Despite all of this, the author herself never appeared in public, and everything about her was wrapped in a veil of uh, secrecy. However, just a few days ago, this author had finally made a public appearance for a book signing, showing up with a mask that's covered his face and drawing even more public attention. And yet, apparently, even that had been a fake. Given this person's radically unconventional track record, it was hardly a surprise to hear her casually insult her fans like this. <laughs> Well, she's honest. <笑>でも、私はあなたのような頭のいい人は嫌いではない。だから会ってくれたんですかええ。伊藤育九郎ゼロ五七六が私八条東也の別のペンネームだと見破ったのはあなただけ。実に見事なるかな。伊藤育九郎ゼロ五七六。おかしなハンドルネームだったわ。でも
18 to the 8th power. In Japanese, Toyo no Hachijo. See, like, is Angie actually this smart? Or is this kind of like a situation where she has knowledge that she shouldn't have? I, I think Angie is, is that smart. I, I, I could see her, like, she goes to a good school, so maybe she got a good education, but she also maybe likes riddles. That's how you reach Hachijo Toya. <laughs> her manner of speaking was extremely condescending, but perhaps because of her elegant manner, it didn't feel particularly irritating. The child of man thing, isn't that... Now I'm like more and more convinced, I'm like, this is that witch from... from Higurashi. Because, like, didn't she call somebody the same thing? This person had a sort of majestic grandeur about her, which made that style of speech seem almost natural, because she's a witch. At least, that's how it felt to me. In fact, it felt almost as though this was the manifestation of some noble being, who would have no need to show herself before mere humans under normal circumstances. That's probably exactly what it is. Since I'm not particularly a fan of hers, I guess this is proof her mysterious charisma really is nothing to be left of. Angie spends so much time around witches, I think she can kind of suss them out like something's fishy about this woman. However, I didn't come here to talk to Hachijo Toya, the mystery novelist. I'm interested, oh gosh, in Itoyu Kukuro 0576 the mysterious web author who only releases her work over the internet. Around the Japanese parts of the internet, Itoyo Kukuro is an extremely famous witch hunter. However, she isn't a big opinion leader like Professor Utsuki. She's one of those message bottle forgers, who are always the center of vigorous debate. Message bottle forgers are, as the name suggests, People who forge and post the contents of riddle-filled message bottles which purport to tell the story of the Rokunjima incident. Claiming to have discovered a new message bottle, they post either a very similar counterfeit or a new theory with their own interpretation of the truth, claiming it was written by Ushuramiya Maria. They openly call themselves Ushuramiya Maria, write up a new bizarre tale as if they had been there themselves and knew the truth, and send their stories out to the newest sea that mankind has discovered the internet, calling them the third or fourth message bottles. So that's a, once again, it's the whole thing about like, okay, so each of the message bottles, because they have the different stories, so like each of these stories are now, were they all written by her? Is this it? This is all just like in the minds of an author? All the first forgers were either simple pranksters or crooks trying to swindle collectors. However, eventually, People who claimed to have solved the riddles of the message bottles' tales and reached the truth started to appear. And they started to work, creating third and fourth message bottles from Ushur Miyamaria. As though they had moved over to the riddle teller side. These people rewrote the tale of the witch with whatever interpretation they wanted. And every once in a while, certain theories would gather an enormous amount of support on the web. So basically like conspiracy theorists. It's like they hear a true crime story and they're like, here's my interpretation of what I think happened. Because of this, some of these creations began to be so widely trusted that they were believed to contain some great truth. This is the beginning of the internet just putting out information into the world and people taking it as the truth. The more rigid witch, the more rigid witch hunters openly despised these people, calling them foragers, counterfeiters, or just witches. Though they claimed to have reached the truth, they refused to tell it and created fake message bottles as though testing everyone else. It's no surprise that the serious witch hunters were very annoyed by these foragers. However, there were many people who simply liked to entertain themselves with the occult fantasy of Rokunjima, and a small number of those accepted these creations as literary works, glad of this expansion to the mysterious tale. Of all the foragers, Itoyo Kukuro was the one most highly regarded. End of the Golden Witch. And that's even titled the same as the as the episodes.
in her latest forgery, forgery, and she killed off at least seven of my relatives during the story. No, if you count Alliance and Banquet, the other forgery she's made before now, which are other chapters, then she's killed off most of my family in horrible ways over and over again. Of course I'd want to complain. However, all of her works are known for being, in both form and level of completion, the closest tales to those written by Ushiro Miyamaria herself. In particular, Itoya Kukuro's first forgery, Banquet of the Golden Witch, was a depiction so complete that it even included Ushiromiya Eva's escape to Kuidorian. People wondered whether this might be the true story of Broken Jima, and it even made it onto the talk shows. Oh, I'm so confused right now. So they're all stories that, like, this woman who I'm, like, I'm pretty sure is a witch, wrote them? Uh, <laughs> or is this just part of Badler's, uh, his game board, where it's like, I don't know, I don't know. So far, all these tales have been nothing more than electronic text on the web. However, people will eventually realize that Itu Kukuro is actually Hajijo Toya. When that happens, these tales will become associated with that bizarre Hachijo, and no one will think of them as mere fan creations. People will probably start wondering if this might actually be a third message bottle she found and released under the guise of a story she herself wrote. When that happens, these stories will probably seem even more bizarre and credible. そうしてあなたは自分の偽書に神秘性と信憑性を与える。信憑性とは<笑> 真実だから。ええ、真実なのですから。消化など不要。あなたはマリアお姉ちゃんじゃない。ましてや。あの日の六軒島にも存在しない。なのに、どうして真実などとおこがましいことを。ああ、じゃあ、頭にちが登りす
その立証のいかにかかわらず真実だとそうですこれより未来やがて全ての真実が明らかになった時私がすでに真実に至っていたと遡って人々は気がつくでしょう Apparently, Angie just couldn't stand Hachijo's attitude. She kept getting irritated, and every time Amakusa would joke around until she settled down again. However, there could be no mistake that Hachijo was a genius, and had used her extraordinary intuition to form a most interesting perspective on the events that had occurred on that island. That was what Angie had wanted to contact Itio Kukuro and hear about her viewpoint. Still, she really was lucky to have been granted this meeting. Angie hadn't been absolutely sure that Itio Kukuro was Hachijo Toya. She hadn't thought that the publishing company would really contact the author. And most of all, she hadn't dreamed that the mysterious masked author would grant her an interview under such short notice. The more she thought about it, the more she realized that the sum of events leading to this meeting made for nothing, sort, nothing short of a miracle. Yes, a miracle. After all, in most cases, I, didn't, I don't get contacted by the publishing company at all and leave for Nijima the next day. Wait, in most cases, is she saying like she knows about. Oh, yeah, is this her realizing like. Because she says in most cases, so like she's done this multiple times, multiple like fragments and timelines where this is the first time that this has ever happened before. Is this it? Is this the miracle one? This is where the miracle happens? I left for Nijima, then I went to Rokinjima. Then I gave Onichen Sakataro. Huh? Why would I have Sakataro? My memory of the future is all muddled. My head hurts. Hajijo said something about showing Angie something good, rose from the sofa, and headed for the study desk. When she turned her back, Amakusa asked Angie, who seemed to be troubled about something, if she was okay. Ne, Amakusa, what is it? It's got a coconino. Huh? Saki Kara Yosuna Ogashi does it? Nani go to the sky. What is she? It's got a coconiswa terinoka. Kyokuganino. Mada nevoket in the sky? So Janakte. That. 私は確か大月教授とはアポイントが取れてたけど伊藤育九郎の件では出版社から返事がなくて結局この日は一日何もできなかったんじゃなかったっけはあ天草はあの大きな黒いバッグを受け取りに行ったんじゃなかったっけ of a something that hasn't happened yet at least not in this timeline that's right. Just before we left for Nijima, Amakusa and I briefly parted ways. He said something about getting a weapon from an acquaintance of his, and he went to go get that large black bag. Wasn't that today? What am I talking about? I mean, didn't I go to Nijima, meet Captain Kawabara, and inside the bed shop? Huh? What? What? <laughs> Did my confusion and uncertainty make me sigh out loud? Even though Hachijo's back was to me, she slowly turned around and smiled as though she had peered into my heart. <laughs> Strange memories, ones that even I can't understand. I tried to hide my confusion, but for some reason, Hachijo had a strange glint in her eyes, as though she could read my mind. <laughs> Hey, she's gonna make her reveal right now, isn't she? Come on, do it. Like, like an endless switch, yeah? Eh? Hachi just like, how long is it gonna take you to realize? Come on. That's why I had to go to the internet and get to the Oh my gosh, she's just straight up saying it to her face. She took a thickly packed brown envelope out of a locked drawer. It appeared to be filled to bursting with pages of printed out text. Perhaps this was a manuscript for one of her works. And the neat letters written with a fountain pen on the envelope. 
spelled out the word Dawn, hey, aka this chapter here. There is no forgery by the name of Dawn, which must mean. Angie could tell this was a new one. Hachijo's newest unreleased forgery. Dawn of the Golden Witch. すべてを知る私には全てが退屈。しかし何も知らぬ無知にそれを読ませ、何がしかの反応を得ることは嫌いではない。だからあなたに読んでほしい。新しい無限の魔女としての新作を。そうです。人の子よ。あなたが憤
Okay, so is the observer. So is she like the reader? She's just the one who's... She's watching the story unfold, but she can't really um, do anything to affect the story? <laughs> oh yeah, that's gotta be quite a shock for Angie to be like, wait, what? He's a game master? He was so dumb, and now he's like controlling the whole game? その私の自らの思考の旅で追いたいのだ。私は病の深きに考えれば鼓動を続けることさえ叶わぬ。つまり、あんたは新しい絵本を私に朗読してもらいたいってわけ。Angie <笑> would be a great witch. I like I said, so condescending. そういう解釈でよい。見返りにそなたもまた自由に思考を旅することができる。Wait, does that mean, so if she's going to be the observer, and we can't see the story through Badler's point of view since he's, like, the game master, I don't think it's possible, but how wonderful would it be if somehow Angie could be... Oh, wait, no, she said she wasn't going to be a piece in this game, but I'm like, if Angie could somehow be on the island, like, little baby Angie, and... But that would be rewriting the story completely differently. That'd be putting a character who wasn't even there. But... I mean, that has been done before. I mean, Erica Furido was put into the story despite not being a real character, I imagine. So who's to say that Badler can't put Angie in the story as, like, the new observer of the game? One can hope. One can hope. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've I, I've seen I've seen her power. <laughs> she can be quite cruel. <laughs> Angie hadn't yet reached the truth either. Though she knew the game was little more than a toy for the witches to play with, she wanted it to resume, so that she could follow the tale and close in on the king called Truth. <laughs> Angie was willing to read the story aloud, but she could quit any time if this witch made her mad. She was, in effect, warning the witch not to annoy her. そなたの改造なくして飲むことも <laughs> Compared to some of the other nicknames uh, people get, like the Endless Witch, the Witch of Miracles, uh, the Endless Sorcerer, whatever a Badler's called, the reader sounds a little bit anti I, I It just doesn't sound as cool. <laughs> そなたへの感傷は私への感傷。私はベアトリーチェの物語の続きを読みたいという唯一の興味を何者にも邪魔されることを許さぬ。そなたをもてあそんだベルンカステルもラムダデルタももろんベアトリーチェさえもそなたに
Miss Witch, who seemed to have an almost divine quality to her, spoke both quietly and forcefully. This was, uh, there was no threat to her words. However, even so, it was clear she was on a different level than Burncastell and the other witches, and not at all to be taken lightly. So no getting torn apart this time. Once again, I guess if Badler is making this game port, of course he would want to protect his sister. そなたに最大の敬意を持って語りかけている。みたいね。その魔女らしい口調さえ、どうやらあんたの中では数百年ぶりに見せた敬意って感じがするわ。そなたは本を読むとき、本によろしくお願いしますと語りかけてから表紙
<laughs> Even Angie's like, that's kind of a ridiculous name. ないない。<笑> Angie accepted her role. She would observe this tale with the witch of theater going. The curtain was rising on the sixth tale. All right. Let's check out. Let's see what Badler has in store for this story. At one time, only Beato and her fellow witches had gathered in this smoking room to chat. Now, however, an unusually large number of people were present. あるじの望まれる結果となるよ。最善を尽くします。ええ。そうしてね。前回のゲームでは<笑> So is Beto, she's just gone. Is she just, like, can't bring her back? She's disappeared? Just gone, gone until... Like, maybe the battler can bring her back somehow? I find it hard to believe she's just not going to come back at all, because we still have... This and two more chapters, and I want to see her again. Beato's <laughs> ガトルド、バトラ教の準備はいかがです。近景、謹んで申し上げる。もう時期のことと知りたまえと立て祭るものなり。待たせるってことはそれだけ自信作なんでしょうよ。He's <笑> like a D&D master. Give he's like he's he's coming up with his campaign. Give him give him some time. It's his first time. It's funny, he, he gets on everybody else's case about, like, how, you know, their games are so bad and evil. And they're like, well, fine, can you do it any better? He's like, I will. <laughs> I'll make the best game ever. <前回、我がアルジの前で、あれだけの恥をかかされたんです。是が火でも打ち破ってみせます。笑> The previous game master, Lambda Delta, had confirmed that Badler understood everything about Beato's game. However, in order to prove it, Badler would have to run this game by himself and carry it through to completion. In, order, in other words, if Erica could crush this game of Badler's, she would, in effect, wipe away the dishonor of that last game. Well, I mean, judging by the very beginning of this episode, uh, I assume it didn't go well for Badler. <laughs> Though Erica was chomping at the bit to get started. It was taking Battler quite some time to show himself. Then, a swarm of gold butterflies swelled out of nothing and formed a human shape. 
From the shape of that familiar dress, everyone immediately realized who it was. Hey, she coming back? Hey, there she is. I mean, if he... If he discovered her truth, then that means that she should hopefully be brought back to life, right? Because... I don't know, it would just seem so pointless if, like, she wasn't around to see him be like, Look, I did it! I found out what you were trying to do with this game. Aww. <laughs> Damn. Beatrice gave an elegant curtsy as she appeared. This humble entrance was so vastly different from her usual high-pitched laugh. Like, she doesn't look dead behind the eyes like before, but she doesn't quite look like herself. She looks a little bit spacey. <laughs> uh, it created a sense of tension as they waited for the start of the sixth game to be announced at last. Oh! What the hell? Badler, you got her all fucked up! Wait, father? Wait, wait, wait. Is she talking about Battler? And her? she sounds so young. What the hell? <laughs> Not only had Beato started talking in an unusually polite manner, she had also used the word father, probably referring to Battler. Oh, I don't think he's going to like that. For an instant, everyone was stunned into silence, but they quickly realized that this was part of something bigger, and they grinned. Beto wasn't the type who could keep up this kind of act for long. It would probably fall apart in a few seconds, leaving her laughing and cackling rudely at everyone. Erica, who was itching for a fight, went for Beto almost at once. <laughs> It, that's creepy. I hope Badler didn't, like, program her like that. To basically just praise him and speak in a very delicate manner and call him father. あくんが強いと言いますか。あくん。まあ、いずれにせよ。前回の狩りはきっちり返させてもらいますので。あんたというバトラの妄想幻想、きっちり消し去って、傍客の深淵に叩き落としてやりますから。私も who is this? <laughs> I have to assume, like, if Badler discovered the truth about Beatrice, he must be using, like, who she actually is. Like, her actual human self, like, this is how she would act? I'm so confused. <laughs> They're all like, what the hell? This is off-putting. This is very off-putting. By this point, everyone realized that something weird was going on. There was no doubt that the face, the dress, and the hair were all bad to reach. Like, even as soon as she showed up, I looked at her, I'm like, she looks like her, but not. It's like, she doesn't have that arrogance to her voice. She looks very, I don't know, yeah, just like very polite and timid looking. However, her expression was different. Even though she had Beato's face. Yeah, right? Beato would never show anyone an expression like that. Someone is... <laughs> They're like, Badler broke her. There was a heavy silence. Lambda Delta spoke for everyone there. At first, Beato wore a smiling yet confused expression. However, when she realized that the mood had gone suddenly stiff, her expression finally darkened and she hung her head. Is this the real Beatrice? Is this who she actually was, like, in real life? Even Delanor was forced to ask, despite the rudeness of the question. 
that was how much this woman, who appeared to be to be Beato, was not. Badler, amnesia, come on, man, that is... <laughs> That's as Erica would say, that is a third-rate thing to put in a story. Having your character have amnesia, come on. So, what a... <laughs> I know it's his first time, we'll cut him some slack. Oh, that's creepy. Madler's voice came out of nowhere. His tone was very slightly cold. Beato's expression looked like that of a young girl being scolded. Alright, here we go. Game Master Battler. Oh, damn! Look at that drip! He looks sharp! He looks good! With a swirl of gold butterflies, Battler appeared. His dignified bearing and appearance were fitting for the ruler of this game. However, his expression was gloomy, and his gaze was directed at Beato. <laughs> That's creepy. He spoke both softly and forcefully. Badler didn't leave her any room for debate. It's just the fact that she calls him father and she sounds so young and he's telling her to go to her room and like, don't come out and you're not supposed to be here. I'm getting bad vibes. Beato hung her head and curtsied as she prepared to leave the room. Oh, so he didn't tell her to do that? I'm kind of happy about that, actually. That would be really creepy. Beto melted into a swarm of butterflies and disappeared. This was the first part of the tale with Badler as the Game Master. The witches had all expected him to come forward with some flashy, big developments, so they were all fairly confused. Their mouths were still hanging open. Unless this was all, like, a, a setup to throw the witches, like, off kilter, but... <laughs>。<laughs><笑> I mean, if he knows the truth about Beatrice, she said that she didn't have any memories, but she was tr like she uh, she had been studying to be like her. I was like, this must be what Beatrice actually was like in real life if he's come to the truth. さあ、バトラ。早く新しいゲームを始めて So maybe like the um the really like that cackling confidence Beatrice maybe that was like some sort of character that the real one put on to kind of hide the fragility and timidness and uncertainty that she actually felt. Lambda Delta. So you send a game master to stay me to look at the crap. Don't. 
もちろんです我が主すぐに引きずり下ろしてご覧に入れますタイトルだけはグッドですそこだけは褒めましょうバカ気に入ってもらえてよかったでは始めようこれより第6のゲームを開始するバトラー solemnly announced the start of the game Compared to his fired up attitude at the end of the last game, where he and Erica had sworn to settle everything next time. He was extremely quiet now, probably because I'm guessing whoever Beatrice is, is. It's not a happy tale, so I imagine knowing the truth is probably is really solemn about it. <laughs> ベアとの様子があまりにこれまでと違うな私も驚いてるわ何が何だかさっぱりよそれ以前に何でベアとがよみがえってるのかさっぱりだわさっき読ませてもらったけど前回の物語の最後で本死んで消え去ったんじゃなかったのこの世界での死は2つある1つはコマとしてゲーム版より取り除かれることこれはゲームにおける死でしかなく仕切り直せば何度でもよみがえる命だだから魔女たちはその命を奪うことにあまりに無慈悲なわけよね To the witch players, the lives of those characters who appear on the game board are no different from pieces on a chessboard that take other pieces and get taken After all, these pieces will be set up again when the next game starts マリアにおけるサクタロウがそのコマの最たるものであっただろうサクタロウがお姉ちゃんのコマ Yes, that does make sense On the game board that represents the inside of Onichin's head サクタロウ certainly does exist and is a piece which always stays by her side Though he's nothing more than a stuffed animal in the real world On Onichin's game board, he is a full piece no different from any other piece でもどうかしら魔女のゲームのコマなら簡単に生き返らせることができるんでしょうでもお姉ちゃんの世界では作太郎はよみがえることができなかった世界でたった一つのぬいぐるみというよりしろが失われたからだだからコマの存在条件が崩れマリアのゲーム版では復活することができなかったそなたがその存在条件を再び満たしてやったからこそ、サクタロウはゲーム版によみがえることができたのではないか。確かに。マリア・オニチェン、was only unable to revive him because she had lost the stuffed animal that was his vessel. Well, that's the case that means that she found it again. If, like my family on Beato's game board, she had needed a vessel for him, she would have been able to revive him as often as she wanted. そうね。確かに。サクタロウはお姉ちゃんの駒かもしれないわ少なくともよりしろが無事である限り何度でもよみがえれる存在だわそうよりしろが無事である限り何度でもよみがえることができるそれが駒の命というものだそれがこの世界での死における一つ目もう一つはゲーム版の外の存在の死だサクタロウの話で続けるならこの場合はマリアの死だ駒じゃなく本当のお姉ちゃんの死ね死だけではない興味や関心の喪失でも同じだマリアがぬいぐるみ遊びを卒業すればゲームのプレイヤーとしてのマリアは死ぬさながらテレビに飽きてスイッチを切るかのように OK this feels This feels like this could be a pretty big hint about the players dying. So the players don't necessarily have to die, actually die, but just not want to play the game anymore. ではそうだ人も魔女も神さえも興味と関心を失えばいつでも死ねるそしてそれを取り戻せば
いつでもよみがえれるしかし神の世界には時間の概念がないからいつよみがえるも自在だが矢のごとく時が過ぎ去る人の世ではそれは容易ではないなそうね一日のずる休みならともかく三日もサボると学校に行くのがものすごく億劫になるわそれが一ヶ月一年十年それこそ魔女の世界のように千年にも及んだらなるほどずる休みもそれだけになればもはや社会における死ねそれだけの長い間死んでいたら社会的な遅れを取り戻せないだけじゃなく当時のモチベーションだって絶対によみがえらないわそれはつまり命があっても一度死んだのと同じことだわ二度と元の自分には戻れないよみがえれないベアとは勝てる道理も希望も全て失った、so This one is like the replacement piece because the original b e a t r i c e is gone. So this one is different.、Uh, I'm confused. So they are still in the game. 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 だからあのベアトリーチがよみがえることは、oh, well, 二度とない。I never thought when I first started this game, like ベアトリーチ annoyed me so much with how arrogant she was, but now I'm sad about that. Instead, we've got this very different one, and I'm like, not vibing with me at all. That Beato, who just sat around the whole game with empty eyes in the fifth game, must have been her corpse. She had managed to remain on the game board despite it all, but then even that corpse was wiped away. If Beato had been the game master at that time instead of Lambda Delta, the game board itself would have vanished at that moment and everything would have ended. Come to think of it, Beato started to lose the will to fight back near the end of the fourth game. When Beato loses her will to fight, the world of this game disappears. However, the witches wanted to keep playing in this game board world, so Lambda Delta bound Beato in place with the curse of that shackle. She used that shackle to make sure the game board wouldn't disappear, even if Beato did lose the will to fight. In chess, this would be the equivalent of removing the set time limit for each turn, making it endless. However, simply having the game endlessly paused on Peito's turn would cause the witches to die from their illness of boredom. That's why Lambda Delta took the position of Game Master. Starting then, Peito's existence was no longer one of the conditions necessary for the game to exist. That's probably why the shackles binding her to the game board were released. And that explains why she disappeared in the fifth game. お兄ちゃんがベアトに真相にたどり着いたことを教えるには一つゲームが遅かったということね第五のゲームなどラムダ・デルタの慈悲だバトラの絶対に真相にたどり着きたいという信念に絶対の魔女が慈悲を示しただけのこと何が慈悲よただの魔女たちの暇つぶしの気まぐれじゃない話を戻すわじゃああのおかしなベアトはプレイヤーのベアトじゃないってことになる駒のベアトということだわそうだだったら誰もがよく知るベアトになるはずバトラもそういうベアトを望んだはずぬいぐるみじゃ嫌だったってこと When playing with dolls, one can project the personality they most desire onto the doll. However, since you are acting out their parts, nothing unexpected can ever happen. Okay, so whoever this Beatrice is, he's not, I'm guessing he's just not having it do whatever he wants. Otherwise, he wouldn't have to tell her, like, don't call me father. So, did he try and, like, like I've been saying, did he try and create a Beato that was as close to reality as possible? But it means he doesn't really have control over it? You cannot hope for any unanticipated happiness. 
In the human world, there's nothing so boring as predictability. That's why, though a doll can become a person's best friend in the world, people eventually get bored and outgrow them. Oni-chan only wants the real Beito. Okay! He couldn't bear having a doll that, could o that he could only make act like Beito. That's very interesting. She's... She's so different. Like, this is the real her. コマなんだから当然だわ。プレイヤーの刺す通りに動く。そしてそれ以外では一切動かない。お兄ちゃんが何を望んでるのかはわかるわ。じゃあこのお菓子なベアとは何者なの？バトラはベアと本当の意味で
all-powerful god. It's just basically tailing Angie, like, I see you as, you're nothing to me, basically. And Angie's like, uh, manners, woman, please. <laughs> Featherin rocked back in her rocking chair and looked up at the ceiling, laughing as though the conversation itself was pleasant for her. Angie was slowly figuring out how to deal with this strange witch. This person was also bored. When a sick person has been in bed for a long time and gets too bored, they sometimes act in a rebellious way. On the other hand, they also get a little bored of being treated kindly all the time. She may want to be respected for her superiority, but it's probably more interesting for her when she's spoken to a little rudely. What a coincidence. That's exactly how I used to be. とにかく、ダイオンのゲームでレアトとお兄ちゃんに何か隠しつがあったことは間違いないの。このレアトを知ることは真相に至る鍵の一つになり得るわ。そうであろう。私も興味を持った。彼女の物語も。Oh my gosh. Are we actually going to get some backstory into Beato? Oh my god, I'm so excited. はいはい。大勢のままに輪があるし。and she raised her hands like a conductor, and the bookshelves in this bizarre study responded. Once again, several books floated out and began to swirl around Angie. Kinto's study is the room belonging to the master in the human world. So, this study in the world of non-humans belonged to the master of the game board, and was a place where he could look down upon the humans. Therefore, it was understandable that one might mistake the imposing, robe-clad man in the center of the study for Kinzo, if only for a second. It wasn't Kinzo. It was Badler, the one who had taken up the position of Game Master, and who had become the new territory lord of this world. Around Badler was a swirl of glowing fragments, sparkling like the night sky, and on the floor was what appeared to be a red magic circle. To an outsider, it would have appeared to be nothing more than an incomprehensible geometric shape, but to Badler, who stood at its center, it was the outline for a new tale. A new line grew across the magic circle, following Badler's gaze. Then, at the instant it connected with the complicated symbol, the entire magic circle flashed brightly. As Badler wiped his forehead and finally relaxed, Genji, who was standing behind him and watching him or watching over his every move, nodded deeply in response. They really are pushing the uh, the Kenzo Badler connection, aren't they? They said about how like you could say you could uh, what was the word? that they said, uh, you could mistake Badler for Kinzo for a moment with him in his robe and everything, and then Genji basically being his right-hand man. これは、ゲームマスターってのは、もっと好き勝手に物語を作っているものとばかり思っていたが、想像以上に骨が折れるな、これは。複数の物語を描き、その表裏を合わせねばなりません。それにしても、初めてとは思えない見事なお手並みでした。エリカ様もきっとこのゲームならご満足いただけるでしょう。あの探偵殿の好みに合うといいんだがな。しかし、レアと純粋に尊敬するぜ。よくあんなややこしい物語をあっさ
これが生じるとロジックエラーと呼ばれる致命的な反則手となり即座にゲーム版は破綻崩壊いたします魔女側が犯せる最大最悪のミスですレアとのゲームも何度かそれに抵触しそうになったのかゲームを生み出す際には常にそれと戦われておりました特にバトラ様が手強くなられてからは相当の苦労をなさっていたようです今回の俺のこのゲームはレアトに見せても恥ずかしくない敵かなはいそれはもちろんでございます<笑>レアトはまだ目を覚まさないのかルールの擬人化から体を蘇生してもうだいぶになるはずだまだ目覚めないのか After remaining silent for a while longer, Genji answered. 3日ほど前にお目覚めになっておりますバトラ様が第6のゲームの設計に集中されておりましたのでお知らせを控えておりました申し訳ございませんそうだったか。ああ、いつも気持ちいい。ああ、いつも。だいぶ長いこと寝てたから、寝ぼけてやがったに違いない。いつも気持ちいい。ああ、いつも気持ちいい。ああ、いつも気持ちいい。ああ、いつも気持ちいい。ああ、いつも気持ちいい。ああ、いつも気持ちいい。ああ、いつも気持ちいい。ああ、いつも気持ちいい。ああ、いつも気持ちいい。ああ、いつも気持ちいい。ああ、いつも気持ちいい。ああ、いつも気持ちいい。ああ、いつも気持ちいい。ああ、いつも気持ちいい。ああ、いつも気持ちいい。ああ、いつも気持ちいい。ああ、いつも気持ちいい。ああ、いつも気持ちいい。ああ、いつも気持ちいい。ああ、いつも気持ちいい。ああ、いあいつに俺はゲームを見せなきゃならないんだ。俺がすべてを理解したことをあいつに教えなきゃならない。ベートスフェイスブロークンとはスマイル。There was no trace in his expression of the hatred he'd once felt towards Beato for murdering his family. ある意味、これが第五のゲーム、最後の謎だったわ。そうだ。バトラは真相に至ると同時にベアトに対する心象が大きく変わったそれはつまりやはりお兄ちゃんとベアトには何かの関係があってそれを彼が傍出していたと考えるのが適当なのバトラと縁がなかったとも受け取れるしかしいずれにせよバトラはその後6年間六軒島には訪れないベアトリーチェとお兄ちゃんはこの1986年10月4日が初対面のはずなのにどうしてすでに確執があるのさっぱり意味がわからないわ第4のゲームでベアトがバトラに問いかけた後ろ見やバトラの罪に何かの鍵があろうなその結果がベアトリーチェという存在なのかもしれないその結果 Yeah, she said the same thing like whatever the sin was called ベアトリーチェ caused her to like become who she is お兄ちゃんの罪の結果がベアト That almost sounds as though o n i c h e n created the witch called ベアトリーチェ himself まるでベアトリーチェとはバトラの駒のようだな6年前のバトラの罪その罪で人が死ぬ殺すのはベアトリーチェ全てが6年前のバトラの罪から連綿と続くと考えるならベアトリーチェを生み出したのはバトラ自身まるでバトラの駒のようだと思った
意味わかんないわお兄ちゃんが何かの罪を犯したとしても少なくとも殺人なんかよりよっぽど軽い何かだわそれに対する仕返しがこの大量殺人なのだとしたらあまりにお兄ちゃんの罪と割りが合わない Yes, that's exactly what I've been thinking I was like If the sin is as light as I think it is, like, if I think it has to do with Shannon and it's him not coming to, like, rescue her, it seems a little disproportionate for her to be like, all right, I'm pissed about that. I'm a m u r d e r your whole family. So either I'm way off about what this is or it really is just that disproportionate. t h e a t e r s i n o k t a t o Minagoroshi n i s t a o t o s a m o k a s a m o n i t a m o m i n a m i n a それに見合う罪がお兄ちゃんにあったなんて信じられるわけがない罪は測る人間によって重さが異なるバトラにとって防止できる程度の罪でもベアトにとっては6年を経てなお一族を皆殺しにするほどの恨みを持つに値するものだったのかもしれぬまあ私もそれはあまりに釣り合わぬと思うしそして何よりそんな相手だったら真相を知ったとはいえバトラがあれだけ親身になるとは到底思えない。So that means there's gotta be more to it, right? <laughs> there has to be. <laughs> Featherin's observation was extremely interesting. In a past game, Beato said clearly that Oni Chan Sin six years ago before the cause of this two day tragedy, or was the cause, I still don't know what kind of sin that was. However, he figured it out at the end of the fifth game, and he even apologized to Beato, even though she was the witch who had massacred his entire family in retaliation for his sin of six years ago. Badler apologized to her. Of course, it was the player Badler who apologized, not the peace Badler, whose family had been murdered over and over again. But even so, Badler must have remembered something at the end of the last game. That made him feel like apologizing. So, no, look, no, my no, Timmy. Corre made no monogatari no dococani. So, they got caxorate, it to them, you know, Cosha. What she was sudeni, Aru Cassetu tatate. Eh? Chicasetu. Mada Hana Seno. Mo Shibaraku. はい。私だって続きを知りたいわ。Onichan and Beatrice, just what kind of connection is there between them? Learning that will probably be the ultimate key to the truth of this world. After all, remembering that was what enabled him to reach the truth. All right, guys, so that will do it for、uh, part one of、uh, chapter six. Boom and Echo, sorry for the、uh, shorter episode this week. We had、uh, some really bad storms, knocked out our power for a bit, so it put me even more behind schedule. I promise next week will be longer, but I hope this episode was worth the wait. And、uh, man, oh man, starting strong with Battler apparently like, losing despite being the game master with、uh, Erica. Erica apparently having him whipped into submission、uh, with their marriage at the beginning, him being trapped in this like weird meta space. I don't know, like, how did you fuck up so badly, Badler? You're the game master. How did that happen? Are you still incompetent? <laughs> and then, of course, we've got Angie coming back, and we got Featherin too. And then we also have、uh, this weird、uh, Beato who's like completely different. Like, super off putting.、Um, so, like, there's got to be something going on there.、Uh, so, just, yeah, a lot introduced in this episode. It, of course, has me excited to see where we're going to go from here. If we are going to get at least some answers of this, this story,、I'll、just have to wait and see. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you next week. Until then, bye. Special shout outs to my top tier patrons. 
Nana, Kaori Makoto, Revealing Storm, Tequila Mockingbird, Jared Fan, Saya, Asborn Kennedy, Harry Gaziff, Icognito, Locus Corollis, Matt Goldsmith, and Izzy Ibo.